Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are still in chapter 1 of set D and talking about the remaining 4 questions in this particular tutorial. So let's get started and quickly discuss them that what could be the possible ways to handle them better. The next question we have for you is question number 5. It says given the following test where that is a test completion report, data held in a database used for test inputs and expected result, the list of elements needed to build the test environment documented sequences of test cases in execution order and test case. Which of the following best shows the tests were produced as a result of performing test implementation? If you remember, we covered a particular topic where we discussed about which phase produces what kind of test were, and that is where this question is coming from. So uh, if we have a good grip on what happens in the test planning, what we create in test analysis, what we create as a part of design, implementation, execution, we would be able to answer this very quickly. But just to help you out, uh, let's go and discuss them, what each of these work products are about and which phase are they going to be created and then conclude with what happens in implementation phase. So if, you st if I start from the top, uh, test completion report, we should not have any worries and questions related to that. This happens in the test completion phase because test completion report is also called as test summary report and it's generally being created as a part of the test completion phase itself. Uh, data held in a database used for test inputs and expected result. You should realize that uh, as a part of test implementation phase, we told you that we prepare the data and also load this into the environment. So database being used or being loaded with the input data is basically the task or activity which takes place as a part of implementation phase. If I go to the next one, it says the list of elements needed to build the test environment is a part of test design because as a part of test design, we identify the infrastructure required for environment or we say designing the test environment, not building the environment. So there are different keywords, right? Designing the environment, building the environment are two different activities. Designing the environment is basically part of test design and building the environment is the part of test implementation. And that could be very easy to get drawn. So please remember the question is about identifying the activities or test where of test implementation. And this one is talking about identifying the elements needed, which happens as a part of the test design. So not implementation. And number four says documented sequence of test cases in execution order. You don't need me to tell you test execution schedule is prepared as a part of test implementation phase. Okay. And uh, the test cases are certainly the part of test design. So uh, that makes my job easier and very to the point that the right answer for this particular question is A, that is two and four, which stands for data held in database used for test inputs and expected result. And the second one is four, that is documented sequence of test cases in execution order are the tests were produced as a result of performing test implementation phase. If you need any further detail what, in what I'm saying here, you're free to go back to that topic and quickly recap it. All right, let's go on to the next one. The next question we have for you is question number six. This says, uh, which of the following is most likely to describe a task performed by someone in a test management role? Now, uh, again, in the chapter one, we said that there are two standard roles in testing. What is one is test management role, aka test manager or testing role, which is test engineer, right? So uh, I, we described that and differentiated that the test planning, monitoring and control, and test completion belongs to test management role, whereas test analysis, design, implementation, and execution belongs to testing role. And that makes it to the point that it will make my job easier to come to the conclusion. So the question is about test management role. So let's look at the activities here. Evaluating the test basis and the test object is a part of test analysis and taken care by testing role. Defining test environment requirements is a part is an activity which happens as a part of test design. And of course, test design is a responsibility of testing role. Assess testability of the test object is a part of test analysis phase. 
and certainly responsibility of the testing role. Creating test completion report is a responsibility of the test manager, which is test management role conducted as a par part of uh, test completion phase. So without any questions, the right answer for this particular question is D, that is test, uh, creating test completion report is a task performed by someone in a test management role. So trust me, the more you have the knowledge, the better you have the confidence about the content, the easier it is to crack the answers, okay, without getting confused. Let's move on to the next. The next question we have is number seven, and it says, which of the following is an advantage of whole team approach? Again, just to recall quickly, whole team approach uh, was a concept of Agile introduced by extreme programming, and uh, there we discussed that in whole team approach, we have a combined team together and everyone takes the responsibility of quality. The developers, designers, and testers work together. And uh, the more important thing, what we understood about the whole team approach is that the teams look forward to uh, have face-to-face -face communication, better collaboration, and understand each other's need and help each other to take the ownership on the tasks. And the benefit is so that uh, someone can pick up the task of another person as well and then continue it from there. So whole team approach added a lot of value altogether. So let's see what exactly is the ask as a part of this particular question. So what is an advantage of the whole team approach? Option A says improved communication between the team members. Yes, working co-located face-to-face uh, -face certainly improves the communication, but it's just the option A. I need to always verify with all three other remaining options before I conclude on any option which is right on the top. So if I see B, B says decreased individual accountability. No, uh, quality is everyone's responsibility. As I just said a moment back, that whole team approach introduced that quality will no longer be just the testing team responsibility, unlike traditional models. In Agile, we call it as testing or quality of the product is everyone's responsibility. So decreased is not the right word. If I go to C, C says faster deployment of deliverables uh, to the end user. Faster deployment of the uh, you know deliverables to the end user is a concept of CI and CD, not whole team approach. You can still take any any kind of duration for your uh, sprints. Okay, it's not that you can deliver it every single day or every single week. You can take your own length of the sprint in order to deliver them. So it does not promise you that you will be doing faster delivery. And as far as the faster word is defined, defined in the sense like, what do you mean by fast? You can make a conclusion on that. Never make conclusions on things what you heard around uh, without justification, okay? Without justification. For example, we know, in fact, I agree that Agile gives faster delivery, but that's a vague word. What do we mean by faster delivery? Some organizations will tell me that Neeraj, we have a sprint length of one and a half months. Now, I don't call that as a faster delivery, but compared to traditional one and a half month sprint is also a faster delivery. See, so as far as there is a context being said to you, you don't have to blindly conclude on something. And as far as this is discussed in the whole team approach, that's the second point which you should take into account. So CICD told us that we can do faster delivery, but whole team approach basically concentrated on collaboration, face-to-face -face communication, and you know, taking the overall responsibility, etc. So that's why C is incorrect. Let's go to option D. Option D says reduce collaboration with external business users. I, you don't need me to tell you that certainly whole team approach increased it, not reduced it, right? So uh, reduction in the collaboration with the business user increased, not reduced. So that's not what is correct. So keeping it to the point, once again, the right answer for this particular question is a, improved communication between team members is an advantage of having whole team approach as a practice when it comes to processes like Agile methodology. Let's move on to the next one. The next question we have for you is question number eight and the final question of this chapter as well. Given the following benefits and drawbacks of the independence of testing, which are listed here, which are most likely to be considered benefits. So again, uh, just for a quick context, that uh, as a part of the syllabus, we covered that the benefits are testers are different in practice than developers, so they would be good at finding different defects. And the second important benefit we had was the testers can challenge 
verify or disapprove the assumptions made by the developers. So the question is about benefits. So these are the two benefits which we have of having an independent testing. Whereas the other things are drawback like lack of collaboration, blame for delays and etc. So the question is about benefits. Let's con concentrate only on the benefits here. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the statements. Number one says testers work in a different location from developer. Uh, that's not, first of all, uh, a benefit. It's a drawback because uh, highly independent test teams will work outside the development team and they will have lack of collaboration. So it's not a benefit, it's rather a drawback. B says testers question the assumptions programmers make while writing the code. Straightforward benefit taken from the syllabus that testers uh, being independent will have uh, assumptions being verified, uh, disapproved or challenged when they test it independently. Uh, third statement says a confrontational dynamic has been established between tester and developer. Now this particular statement, uh, confrontational dynamic, dynamic, team dynamic has been established between tester and developer is uh, of course a drawback because uh, when we talk about uh, team working independently, they would have uh, more concerns related to each other. So it's a main disadvantage of having independent test team that you are not agreeing to each other, having collaboration issues, and that's not a benefit. Rather, having an independent team would result into that as a drawback. Let's move on to the next one. And uh, the next we have is number four, developers uh, have convinced themselves that testers are most accountable for quality. And if you remember, this is uh, another drawback of independent testing, that testing team is seen as a sole responsible team for defining quality in the product. However, we don't want that. We want the whole organization or whole project to take the responsibility of the quality and uh, just keeping it only limited to testing team would never lead to the success or achievements of the goals, what we have related to quality. So yes, exactly, developers uh, thinking that a testing team are only responsible for quality is a drawback rather. And number five, testers have different biases than those held by the developers is the first benefit which we just discussed a moment back. So that is testers are independent in nature and they can certainly result into finding different defects than that of a developer. So that's how it makes it very simple. Uh, before looking at the options, before reading the statements, I recall the two benefits what we have of having independent testing team. And these are the two statements uh, which we could easily filter it out and can re relate that what other statements are as drawback. So put together, the right answer for this particular discussion and the question is B, that is two and five, that is two testers questions, uh, testers question the assumptions programmers make while writing the code. And fifth, testers have different biases than those held by developers are the only two benefits which we have known for uh, from the independent testing, right? So this is how uh, it again makes your job simpler and very conclusive uh, within no time to get to the right answer because getting to an answer is easy, but getting to the right answer is a little complicated. And for that, we need to have this level of understanding the way I'm tackling the same. Right. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.